Now to travel, Debbie's back in the Harvey Norman Lounge to revisit some of her most loved places. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know how much I love my cycle trails, yeah. and I've done a few now. It is winter, but we're starting to think about summer vacations, family activities, so I thought I'd revisit some of the cycle trails that Excellent. I've done. Excellent. Let's start with the North Island then. Okay, so straight to Hawke's Bay. So we got bikes from Takaro Trails. And, I mean, they do loads of self-tour itineraries. They can help you out with the gear that you need as well. When I was there, the Seawalls project was underway, so there's about 30 murals that are designed to draw attention to environmental issues. So download a map or ask someone for a map there. We went from Ahuriri around the waterfront to Marine Parade all the way around to the aquarium on the waterfront there. I didn't see any hills there either. No hills. So <laughs> Hawke's Bay Trail's really nice and flat. There's a river and a coastal network stretching over the Hiratunga Plain Plains, and there are three great rides that they have there. There's Landscapes Ride, there's Water Ride and Wineries Ride as well. So together about 200 kilometres of mostly off-road trails that crisscross the region. And they also link a lot of the attractions in Napier, Hastings and Havelock North as well. Each route is really unique in its own way. So, I mean, go to a winery for lunch, go along the coast. There's so many different things you can do there. Really great trails. It sounds excellent. Um, perfect for a summer getaway, actually. Yeah. So what about the South Island? OK, so I'm going to take you to Arrowtown. I did this quite recently. So Queenstown Arrowtown has about 120 kilometres of shared pathways for walkers and cyclists. I did part of the Arrow River Bridges ride, so you can... It starts behind the township of Arrowtown, crisscrosses over the Arrow River. So you can see there that I'm on a suspension bridge, stunning landscape. As you can see, this is a great photo opportunity that you can stop in the middle of the bridge. Little bit of movement, so it did take me a couple of guys to go all the way across without stopping and walking my bike. Also alongside the riverway, there's these beautiful trails uh, which are quite woody as well. So these trails will take you out to Chard Farm Vineyard or Gibston Valley Winery, which is where we ended up and had a lovely meal there. So that'd be beautiful, but if you've gone all the way there, do you have to wobble all the way back on your bike after your wine tasting <laughs> and your lunch wine and everything? Tasting. Well, you know what, when you book your bike, tell them where you intend to end up and they will organise some transport to get you and the bike back to your accommodation after. So you don't worry about having to cycle all the way Just back. get there, don't worry about the getting back so you Absolutely. can eat and have what you like. That sounds really good, so where are we going next then? Okay, we're well, down to the original cycle trail, Central Otago. So you have to do that at least once. We got um, our bikes from She Bikes, He Bikes and set off from Clyde, the railway station there. So the section we did was from Clyde to Omakau and it's about 36 kilometres. The entire Central Otago Rail Trail is about 150 kilometres. So because it's so established, the beauty of it is there's so many pubs and cafes along the way, so you can stop where you like. We stopped at Chateau Creek Tavern, which is a really historic tavern, and, I mean, right there on the cycle trail, there you go, pull up to the back of it. Perfect. Great scones at Chateau Creek, by the way, I have to say. Um, we went all the way to Omacal. This is the railway station that we're just pulling into here. Go to the Commercial Hotel. Last year they picked up the prize for the best country pub in New Zealand, so go and try them for lunch. They're a great place to stop. That must be good. So is it an easy trail? Uh, on that part of the trail, there was a very small rise, Tiger Hill it's called, but you know what? They gave me an e-bike, and I can't recommend these highly. I'm a convert because you can use it as much or as little as you like. So if you're really worried about your fitness level, get an e-bike. Nobody even knows when you're using it, so you can just power up those hills and arrive fresh as the day's end. Not See, have to who worry. wouldn't want one of those? It sounds ideal. Yeah. Um, but you did another trail in Otago, didn't you? you that yes. the Roxburgh Gorge one? Roxburgh Gorge. Now this is scenically stunning. So we mixed it up a wee bit. We put on a we went on a boat on the way out there with Lawrence from Clutha River Cruises. He took us to the gorge um, to visit the old miners' huts. Now this is a really historic part of New Zealand. Fascinating to hang out with Lawrence and hear all the stories about the miners. Then he dropped us off halfway up the gorge uh, with uh, uh, Shane from uh, Trail Journeys. So he was really great to ride with because he, he gave us all the gear that we needed. And I mean, the Roxburgh Gorge, you've got 300 metre cliffs on either side of the Clutha River, so it is beautiful to cycle through. And uh, we just went straight back to Alexandra. So well, that beautiful. looks like a vague hill though to me, Debbie. Or is it just the angle? <laughs> Going downhill. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Not a problem. Oh, some great travel tips there and some wonderful bike rides to be doing. I want to do it with a basket on the front of my bike. Oh, yes. Those are so cool. And the beauty of the bikes um, that the operators provide is that they're mostly upright. They have really good padded seats. Yep. Yeah. That's very important. Ticks all the boxes. All about the padded seats. <laughs> Debbie, thank you so much.